Do you have a favorite haunted house story? I'd have to really think about it to think what mine is. I'm not sure off the top of my head, but I do love reading books about haunted houses. And so today we're going to talk about A House with Good Bones by T. Kingfisher. T. Kingfisher is really fantastic. I've now read three books by them. I loved this one. This is my favorite one yet. So the book follows our main character, Samantha, and she is a archaeoentomologist, which is a archaeologist that studies insects in archaeology, like what's found in the layers of dirt, the insects that were around at that point in time. The dig gets put on hold currently, and so Samantha goes to live with her mom until the dig comes back out because she sublet her apartment. She doesn't really have anywhere to go at the moment. So she's going to go back and live with her mom for a while, stay in her old room and whatnot. And her brother was kind of like, hey, mom's been really weird. She's been behaving very strange. I don't know what's going on with her. And Samantha's like, well, I don't know. I'll see when I get there. So she gets there and yeah, mom's behaving really, really weird. Her mom was always kind of like liberal. She was very vibrant and vivacious and she gets to the house in the walls are all repainted and it's like everything's like beige and accru whatever the color of accru is i have no idea what that is i imagine it's like eggshell or really boring but her mom used to have the walls painted like these brilliant bright colors and then she also hung up this painting that is this racist freaking confederate painting that her grand may who is the grandmother who passed away had had hanging up because grand may was like this racist angry woman who was mean and she would threaten the kids that if they didn't behave, the underground children will come, take them away or whatever these mythical underground children are supposed to do. I don't know. So she was a surly old broad. But the mom, like, all of she repainted the stuff. And then whenever Samantha says anything that's kind of bad about Grand May, the mom, like, freaks out. And so this is very suspicious. And as you can tell in any kind of haunted house story, <laughs> the mom's acting suspicious about... Grand May, you know, anything bad said about you could kind of surmise that, oh, hey, maybe the house is being haunted by Grand May. It seems kind of obvious with how the mom's behaving. So, okay. But Samantha is very logical. She does not think that way. She does not believe stuff is haunted. Her Grand May, too, uh, she had these amazing roses all throughout the backyard. The roses are still all just as vibrant and alive and well in the backyard. No one takes care of them. <laughs> they just magically grow by themselves. And she's an entomologist. So going out into the yard one day, she finds there's no insects anywhere. That's not possible, is it? It's freaking weird. And then she starts like digging into the family history a little bit. She finds out like the father of Grand May, some of these old news articles, like called him like the mad wizard of Boone. So <laughs> you have that kind of weirdness. And then there's all this other strange stuff that starts being brought into it. Like, there's a bunch of vultures that just kind of hang out in the neighborhood. And apparently one of the neighbors down the road has this tree where all these vultures roost. That the Grand May, this woman, like, hated this other lady and was always referring to her as a witch or whatever. So you have this strange lady who lives down the road where all these vultures roost in her tree. And that's kind of strange. And then you got the reclusive neighbor across the street who thinks the government is spying on everyone and then you get all these other threads woven in the story about like Thelema and what are these mythical underground children and, and just it's super off the wall wacky weird and I absolutely loved it I had to know what was gonna happen next it was a great haunted house story and it is now probably my favorite T. King Fisher that I've read out of the other two I read Nettle and Bone and I read um What Moves the Dead and I really loved Nettle and Bone I thought What Moves the Dead was a really good retelling of the House of Usher by Edgar Allan Poe. This one though is not my favorite. It was so weird. The ending was freaking, I don't know, it was ridiculous, but it was awesome. If you like haunted house, off the wall, weird stuff, did you hear all the stuff I was saying? Like wizards, Thelema, underground children, vultures all hanging out in the neighborhood, and uh, ladybugs. Also, if you haven't had a chance to check out T. King Fisher yet, fantastic author. I really want to just keep traveling through their books because they all seem kind of like so different and unique. Like some are more dark fantasy, some are haunted house, some are obviously retellings, and they're just fantastic. So if you are a fan of T. King Fisher, or if you're not, and you want to hear a little bit more about more of the books, the next video coming up will be about another book by T. King Fisher. So stick around, check it out. 
And if you had fun hanging out today, hit that subscribe button, come back, see me again, and we'll talk about more bookish things and weird stuff. <laughs>